Today, we are going to look at the introduction to variation, where we will be talking about direct variation. Hello, my name is Samuel Kutuka, and coming right up is the introduction to variation. So we want to kick off this tutorial by looking at what the concept of variation is. So the concept of variation is used to show the relationship between two or more quantities. So when we talk about variation, we simply want to show the relationships between two or more variables or two or more quantities. So assuming we have quantity A, and then we have another quantity, quantity B. We want to see the relationship between these two quantities and what effect does increasing quantity A has on quantity B and what effect does decreasing quantity A has on quantity B. Now, two or more quantities that are related to each other are said to either vary directly, inversely, or jointly. This means that there are three types of variation the first one is the direct variation which is the type of variation that we are looking at in this tutorial the second is the indirect or inverse variation indirect or inverse variation the last one is the joint variation <clears throat> like I said earlier on, for the purpose of this tutorial, we will be focusing on the direct variation. But in our subsequent tutorials, we will be looking at the indirect variation as well as the joint variation. And at the end of this entire series, we will be having a complete tutorial on variation with enough examples to prepare you for your exam or for your class. So let's look at what direct variation is and how we can represent direct variation mathematically. So direct variation. Now, two or more quantities are said to be directly proportional or vary directly when both quantities increase or decrease together. What we mean is, assuming we have quantity A and quantity B, if quantity A and quantity B are said to be directly variated or the variation between quantity A and quantity B is a direct variation, an increase in quantity A causes an increase in quantity B. The same way, a decrease in quantity A causes a decrease in quantity B. This type of relationship or variation is what we refer to as the direct variation. Now let's look at how to represent direct variation mathematically so that you will be able to apply them in solving practical questions or practical uh, examples in real life. So assuming we have a statement y is directly proportional or y varies directly as x raised to the power n. So we have y varies directly as s raised to the power n if we have this statement and we need to express it mathematically we write y then we bring this sign and then we write s raised to the power n this is how we express direct variation mathematically now y and s raised to the power n are what we are referring to as our quantities okay so we are looking at the relationship between y and x and we are saying they are directly related and so we are using this statement to mean that they are directly variated or they are, the variation between them is a direct variation so to remove this proportionality sign or the variation sign that we have over here this alpha okay this sign is what we are using as our variation sign so when we remove the variation sign we need to introduce a constant 
the, the constant can be any variable at all so long as you define it and that variable is not one of the variables given in the question so for this tutorial i'm going to be using k as my constant of proportionality or my constant of variation so my y now becomes y is equal to my constant multiplied by the second variable or the second quantity h raised to the power n this is an expression to show direct variation between quantity y and quantity h raised to the power n where k is my constant or my variation constant variation constant so k is my proportionality constant proportionality proportionality constant or my variation constant now let's have a look at a statement or an example to see how we can practically apply this in solving a problem so we have suppose m varies directly as n and m is 45 and n is 2.5 we are to determine the variation constant and write an equation for this relationship we are also to use the equation we found to find the value of m when n is given as 4 so let's go ahead and solve this statement or this question so we write down our solution now we can see that we have suppose m varies directly as n so this is a statement showing what direct variation so we write m is proportional or varies directly as n now to show the relationship we remove the proportionality sign and we introduce a constant so we have m is equal to k n where we say that k is our what constant of proportionality or our variation constant now the initial condition that we are given is that when m is 45 n is what 2.5 okay and we are to find m when n is what 4 now there are two approaches to solving a question like this the first approach is this so i'm going to use the first approach after that i'll use the second approach so let me use approach one let me use that as what method one so the first method is for you to find the constant of proportionality and then use that back in solving or finding the next quantity that you're supposed to find so with that method it goes like this we have our statement is m is equal to k n when m is 45 we have that to be equal to k and then the value of n is 2.5 so to solve for our k we divide by 2.5 2.5 2.5 and we get the value of our k to be equal to what 18 so which means our constant of proportionality is equal to 18 now that we have our constant of proportionality to be 18 we can go ahead use this 18 to write a general equation for this relationship that way our equation now becomes m is equal to what 18 n so these answer the the first part of the equation that says write an equation for the relationship so this is the equation for the relationship now moving on we want to find the value of m when n is equal to 4 so for that we quote our statement or our equation now which is what let me use this as ii m is equal to what 18 n we have the value of n to be 4 so we substitute that over here so when n is equal to 4 our m is now equal to 18 multiplied by 4 and if we compute this into our calculator we are going to get the value of 72 as our m now this is the first method or the first approach to solving a question like this 
Now, the second approach will jump the relationship between E or will jump the relationship between M and N by jumping the equation for the relationship. So, we will not be able to get the equation for the relationship, but we will still be able to find the value of N. Sorry, the value of M. So, let's look at that. In the second method, method 2, we use the equation we have over here. So, we have M is equal to what k n okay so we try to denote this by making it let's say m1 k1 and then n1 then we write another one let's say m2 is equal to k2 n2 okay so we first of all try to make k1 and k2 the subject of each of these equations okay we are using m1 k1 n1 and m2 k2 n2 because we have this to be let's say this is our m1 this is our n1 this is our m2 this is our what our n2 so we want to find the relationship between m1 and m2 and then n1 and n2 and that way we can be able to find what m2 so let's make k1 the subject so making k1 the subject over here we have m1 on what n1 the same way, making K2 the subject over here, we have what? M2 on N2. But the constant of proportionality is the same for both cases, which means K1 is equal to what? K2. If this statement is true, it means we have M1 on N1 is now equal to what? M2 on N2. So this is the relationship between these two variables that we have M1 and then N1 as well as what M2 and then N2. So from here, we simply do the substitution of the values that we have over here and we find our M2. So let's go ahead and look at that. So our M1 is 45 on our M2 which is what 2.5 and this is equal to our M2 on our N2 which is 4 so let me use this side A18 is equal to M2 on 4 which implies that our M2 is now equal to what 18 multiplied by 4 which means we cross multiply over here so the 4 multiplies the 18 the m2 multiplies the we are having our m2 to be equal to 18 multiplied by 4 will give us what 72 as seen in the first method let's go ahead and see another example let's look at our first actual example when an object such as a car is accelerating Twice the distance d, it travels varies directly with the square of the time elapsed. One car accelerating for 4 minutes travels 1440 feet. We have to write an equation relating travel distance to the time elapsed and use the equation to determine the distance traveled by the car in 8 minutes. Now, as in the previous example, we see that for this particular example it is the method one that can actually work for the this example that we have over here in the sense that the i aspect is asking us to find the equation relating the distance travel to the time elapsed so it is using the method one that we can be able to find a constant of proportionality and use that to find the equation relating the two variables so let's look at that so let's look at i we have over here twice the distance travel varies directly as the square of the time we have 2d twice the distance varies directly as what square of the time traveled so this is the relationship that we have to remove the proportionality sign we introduce a constant which means 2d is now equal to k t squared now for the first scenario we have when time is 
4 minutes t is equal to 4 the distance travel d is 1440 feet so using these two variables if we insert them into this equation we will be able to find the value of k so we have 2 multiplied by 1440 and that is equal to k t is 4 squared if we multiply 2 by 1440 we are going to get 2880 to be equal to the square of 4 is what 16 multiplied by the constant k so to find a constant k we divide 2880 by 16 and that gives us the value of our constant to be equal to 180 now that we have the value of our constant we can now write the equation relating the distance traveled to the time elapsed as 2d is equal to k t squared but we found out that k is 180 so our 2d is now equal to 180 t squared this now becomes the equation relating the distance traveled to the time last now as you can see this can further be simplified in the sense that if we divide 2 by 2 we get the distance to be equal to what 90 t squared as the relationship between the distance traveled and then the time elapsed. so it's either you stop here as the relationship between the distance traveled and the time elapsed, or you can further simplify it down to get d is equal to 90 t squared as the relationship between the distance and then the time elapsed. so with that out of the way let's look at the ii of the question we have we are to use the equation to determine the distance traveled by the car in eight minutes this is very easy so using the relationship we've established over here we have d is equal to 90 t squared but we know that our time is what eight minutes so we want to find the distance in eight minutes so which means we do the substitution we have 90 multiplied by the time which is eight squared so our distance is now 8 squared is 64 so we have 90 multiplied by 64 and this gives us the distance of what 5760 feet so this is the distance travel by the car accelerating at this at the same speed in 8 minutes so let's have a look at another example example number two the electrical resistance in ohms of a wire varies directly as its length if a wire of 110 centimeters long has a resistance of 7.5 ohms what length has a total resistance of 12 ohms now for this for the purpose of solving this tutorial or this particular example i'm going to use the second method which will show the relationship between the length of the wire and the resistance and then using that to find the second length without necessarily finding the constant of proportionality so let's write down our solution so we have the electrical resistance so we can see that over here we've not been given any variable to represent our electrical resistance and then the length of the wire so it is advisable to define your quantities and denote them with a variable if one is not given in the question so for us to do that let's say let small r be our electrical resistance in the same way let small l be the length of the wire now that we have defined our quantities let's go ahead and look at the relationship between them so we have the electrical resistance 
varies directly as the length so we have r varies directly as the length to remove the proportionality sign we introduce a constant and hence the equation becomes r is equal to kl now we know that if the wire has the length of 110 centimeters the resistance r is 7.5 ohms now what length so it means we don't know the new length in centimeters which is having the resistance of what 12 ohms so we don't know that so to find it we want to say let's make this equation becomes r1 is equal to k1 l1 as equation 1 and then we have r2 to be equal to k2 l2 as our equation 2 from here let's try to make k1 and then k2 the subject so if we make k1 the subject it means we divide both sides by l1 so we now have r1 on l1 as our equation 1 from here and then we now have k2 to be equal to what r2 on l2 from our equation 2 over here but the prop but the constant of proportionality for both is the same so it means k1 is equal to what k2 this implies that we can now have the ratio r1 on l1 to be equal to what r2 on l2 from here we can simply go ahead and find for l2 okay so this is l2 r2 this is r1 l1 so we have r1 to be 7.5 on l1 which is 110 to be equal to our r2 is 12 and then our l2 is unknown okay so from here we simply do cross multiplication and then we find the value of our answer so let's go ahead and do that so we have 12 multiplied by 110 to be equal to 7.5 l2 let me make some space over here so 12 multiplied by 110 will give me 1320 to be equal to 7.5 l2 making l to the subject means we divide by 7.5 so we have 1320 divided by 7.5 so this will give us a length of 1320 divided by 7.5 and that gives us a length of what 176 centimeters so it means a length of what 176 centimeters of the wire will have a total resistance of 12 ohms let's look at one final example we have the stretch in the loaded spring varies directly as the load it supports a load of 8 kilograms stretches a certain spring of a certain spring 9.6 centimeters we have to find a constant of variation and the equation of the direct variation we have to find what load will stretch the spring 6 centimeters so let's go ahead and look at this the solution to this problem so we have the stretch in the load in the loaded spring varies directly so we say let s be the stretch in the loaded spring and then let l be the load it supports so we have l to be the load it supports from here we know that the stretch in the loaded spring varies directly as the load it supports so which means our s is now equal to kl from our statement above now we've been 
told that the load of 8 kilogram which means L is equal to what 8 kilogram causes a stretch in the spring of what 9.6 centimeters so we have our stretch to be what 9.6 centimeters so substituting these two values into the equation we have 9.6 here to be equal to 8 L so our L is now 9.6 on 8 which now gives us an L value of what sorry K this is our constant this is supposed to be K our constant of proportionality so our constant of proportionality from here becomes 1.2 hence from here you can write the equation of the variation as s is equal to kl but k is equal to 1.2 and hence our s is equal to 1.2 l so this now becomes the equation of the direct variation from here we can now go ahead and find what load will cause the stretch in the spring of what six centimeters so which means our load we do not know but we know our stretch that we are expecting is six centimeters so from here we do the substitution and we have six to be equal to 1.2 l we simply divide through by 1.2 to get a value of our L. So our L now becomes 6 on 1.2 and this now gives us 5 kg which means it requires a load of 5 kg to cause a stretch of 6 cm within the spring. So thank you so much for watching. This is just a brief introduction to what variation is and precisely how we can show the relationship uh, of a direct variation. My name is Samuel Kotoka, known on YouTube as the online tutor. Now you can follow me on Instagram at the online tutor 990. And as well, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel OT as my profile and then the name the online tutor. So, can you help my channel grow as I'll be posting more and more tutorials on this platform? So, thank you once again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.